I get asked all the time in the comment section, where do I start? Where do I begin with your videos? Well, um, I haven't been able to answer that question because I, I don't really have a lesson one until now. Hello friends and neighbors, welcome back to the Brownstone. My name is Rich Brown. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, today is lesson one. If you are a brand new beginner uh, on the base, picking it up for the first time, start right here. There are quite a few lessons on the channel geared towards beginners, but I, for some reason, uh, I've never actually put up a lesson number one. If you're just picking up the bass for the first time, this is where you start. Before we get to the actual playing, we need to talk a little bit about uh, hand positioning because this can be particularly challenging for brand new players. Um, now, as far as the right hand is concerned, there's some debate as far as positioning goes. And what I say might not work for everyone. So I suggest you uh, check out some different sources. This is YouTube. There's gonna be a lot of great channels that are gonna tell you exactly uh, um, what to do as far as hand positioning. I will give you my two cents and uh, take that with a grain of salt. So here's what I do, basically. What I want is for my thumb to be anchored somewhere this is where the debate comes in because some people like to use the floating thumb technique. And, um, and I suggest you look that up as well and see which technique works best for you. Uh, the floating thumb does not work for me. I've tried it over and over again and I can't do it. So what I like to do is I like to anchor my thumb either on the bridge pickup or the neck pickup or sometimes right on the neck itself. Um, but for the most part, I like to, to anchor my thumb like right on the bridge pickup. Sometimes if I'm playing a little bit like on the higher register and the higher strings, I'll anchor my thumb like right on the E string, sort of tucked right in. You might, might not be able to see that, but kind of tucked right in in this corner created by the E string and the pickup. So once my thumb is in place, I want to get my wrist kind of as straight as possible. And a lot of this will have to do with the positioning of your elbow. You can bring the elbow out a little bit. This is probably gonna be better if you're standing. You might feel some tension on, in the shoulder, but if you position, if you find the right angle for your elbow, that tension should probably alleviate itself. And, and you won't feel it as much. So that's the deal. I'm using my first and second finger to play the strings. Now, there was, a, there was a time when I first started learning this instrument where I did everything with the first finger and I couldn't get the second finger up to speed. So what I did was I stopped using the first finger and I only used the second finger just to play everything. And now I feel that they're at uh, equal strengths. So when you're playing, especially if you're playing um, faster songs, you want to get used to the idea of alternating between the first and second finger. So we'll get into some exercises in a bit that will help you with that. But for now, all I want you to do is just play the top string, that open E, and um, just play first finger, second finger. Alternate between those two fingers, go back and forth. Even out loud, just say one, two, one, two. You can even go uh, in the opposite way and, and start with the second finger and go two, one, two, one, starting with the two. Either way, I want you to get used to the idea of alternating between those two fingers. Because if you're playing one finger that's just dominant, um, whether it's the first or second finger, um, what's happening is that finger is going to become stronger. And then when you have to play faster sort of phrases or passages or bass lines, you're going to run into a bit of trouble. So what you want is equal strength between these two fingers. Now, when it comes to the left hand, positioning is very important. 
And the positioning of the thumb is ultra important. If I bring my fingers together like so, you can see where my thumb is. This is basically a relaxed position of, of bringing the fingers together. Not necessarily into a fist, but as if you were going to pick up a ball. So when you see the fingers like this, this is what I'm bringing to the base. And the positioning of the thumb is going to be probably like around the middle of the back of the neck, right? This way, what happens is, um, I can pivot the thumb and swing it back and forth so I don't necessarily have to make these huge stretches. One of the questions that I get a lot is that people have trouble playing using the pinky on the left hand. This will help to take care of that. The lower your thumb is on the back of the neck, the easier it will be to use your little finger. If I bring my thumb up like this, Using my little finger is like next to impossible. But if I bring the thumb down to at the highest, the middle of the neck. When I say the middle of the neck, I mean, if this is the neck moving this way, then my thumb is gonna be like right there, right? So there's the neck, there's my thumb, like that. Does that make sense? Um, and it can be even lower. As you bring the thumb down, it's going to be easier for you to use the pinky. I'll show you what I mean. So with the thumb being lower on the neck and also allowing myself to swing and pivot that thumb so I can get a little bit more room, I have a much larger span that I can access. So here I've gone all the way up to the fifth fret without moving my thumb at all. But you can see how I'm pivoting with the thumb, using that thumb as kind of a fulcrum to access more range on the neck. So let's talk about the E string, the lowest string on the bass. What I want you to do is focus on the first three notes on that E string. That's going to be the open E, and then the first fret of the E, and then the third fret of the E. So that's zero, first fret, and third fret. Now, you can see the fingers that I'm using correspond with the frets. In other words, I play the open string, and then with the first fret, I use the first finger. And with the third fret, I use the third finger. That's it. Now, here's your first exercise. What I want you to do at your own pace, you can take this as slow as you want, I want you to play four times on each note. Four times on the open E, four times on the note F with your first finger on the first fret of the E string, four times on the note G with your third finger on the third fret of the E string. Does that make sense? Now, as you're doing that, with the right hand, I want you to alternate between your first and second finger. This might be a little tricky, but take it at your own pace, take it slow, and make, make sure you get yourself coordinated so that the hands know exactly what they're doing, what they're supposed to be doing. This helps you to work the exercise into what's called the muscle memory, so you don't necessarily have to think about what's going on. The hands already, just, the hands already know what to do. That's what we're working towards here. So, take it at your own pace. I'm gonna go really slow and just play four times on each note concentrate on the position, positioning of my left hand, and also concentrate on alternating the first and second finger of the right hand. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Open E. First finger on the first fret, that's F. Third finger on the third fret, that's G. Let's go backwards. Take it back down to the F at the first fret, and then open E. Let's keep doing that. First fret, F, third fret, G, third finger. We'll go back down. One more time. F, first fret, third fret. Back to the first fret, 
and let's end on the E. How about that? One thing I should mention is that if you're experiencing any buzzing with any of these notes, then it might have to do with the positioning of your finger um, in proximity to the fret. So what I want you to do is make sure that you are playing as close to the fret as possible, almost like almost right on top of it. And that should take care of any buzzing that you're hearing as you play. So here I'm playing the F at the first fret of the E string, and you can see where my finger is in relation to the fret. It's almost like you can't even see the fret. I'm almost right on top of it. And then the same thing, I wanna get as close to the fret as possible without like actually playing on the fret. That's the thing. So if you're hearing any buzzing, it might be that you're too far away from the fret or that you're right on top of the fret. Again, what you wanna do is get as close to it as possible without playing on top. And that should clean up the tone. That's it. I just want you to focus on those three notes. Lesson number one. I hope that helps all my beginners out there, friends and neighbors. Um, if you like this lesson, do give it a like. Listen, you know what? All that stuff is gonna be in the description box below. I don't need to go through it. Like, subscribe, donate to the channel if you want, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm gonna be back with more lessons for you, my friends and neighbors, especially the beginners. Um, but I am not neglecting the rest of y'all out there my intermediate and advanced players. I've got some more stuff coming up for you as well. But for now, I'm gonna leave it at that. And I thank you for visiting me here in the Brownstone. My name is Rich Brown, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.